Okay. So in this video, I'm going to do some simple cases of how integration of parts is used for products. And basically, I'm just going to describe the strategy, figure out what to differentiate, what to integrate, how many times to do it, and so on. In three very simple cases. These are not all the cases. These are just three of the most common simple cases. The first is polynomial times a trigonometric or exponential. And right now, I'm restricting my attention to a trigonometric or exponential, which is of a very basic form, which is a polynomial in sine or cosine or x or sine h. So yeah, I'm including sine, cosine, exponential, sine h, and cosine h. What I'm not including are things like tan, tangent function, which is which is a quotient of sine and cosine. Well, that's sort of a rational function. So I'm not including those. I'm just including things like these. Okay. So for these. Let's get the eyelet rule out and figure out what that would tell us. If you're following eyelet, then you have polynomial, which is here, algebraic. Right? Over here. Right? And you have the trigonometric or exponential, which is here. So the precedent says the polynomial is more on this side, so it's a more good to differentiate. Trigonometric exponential is more good to integrate. Does that make sense if you think about it? What happens to the polynomial when you differentiate it? The degree goes down one. It remains a polynomial, but the degree goes down by one. And if you do, if you differentiate a polynomial enough times, what happens? Goes to zero. Becomes zero. What about these functions? Sine, cosine, exponential, hyperbolic, and hyperbolic cosine. When you integrate them, they remain of roughly the same type, right? So it makes sense now to say differentiate the polynomial. Okay, and integrate the trig on slash exponential and repeat till the polynomial vanishes and you're just left with the trig exponential. With the trig exponential, each time you integrate, it still remains in the same family. So you can keep doing the integration. Okay, now how many times do you expect you will need to do this differentiation and integration? So, if the polynomial has degree d, then you will need to do differentiate a d plus 1 times to go to 0. I will need to differentiate d times to get to a constant. And effectively, you will need to do degree plus 1 number of integration. So, this piece you will have to integrate degree of polynomial plus 1 times. So, let me just write down. So, integration by parts. Integration by part will be used degree of poly times. But the number of times you actually do integrations, which will be one more than the number of times you use integration by parts. The actual number of integrations will be the degree plus one. We'll see examples of this in a separate video. Okay. Now, the next type I want to consider is inverse trig or log times polynomial. Okay, inverse trig or log times a polynomial. So, it's something in here times something in here. So, what does the precedence rule tell you? What do you differentiate? Hmm? Uh, log. Inverse or log and you integrate the polynomial. Does that make sense if you think about it? Well, the inverse trig or log, when you differentiate, where do you land up? You land up in the algebraic domain. You don't quite get a polynomial, you get a rational function or a radical, but you still land up in the algebraic domain. The polynomial, when you integrate, what do you get? You get another polynomial, it's still algebraic. So, so the new integration you'll have will be polynomial times rational function, which is purely a rational function, or polynomial times radical, which is just purely an algebraic integration. Okay, so you differentiate the inverse trig or log and you integrate the polynomial. The polynomial does become a little more complex but that's not an issue because the point here is you're trying to move out of this domain and completely in the algebraic domain. You do completely go into integration of a rational function or integration of a radical. Okay, so so the next one I want to talk about is trig cross exponential trig cross trig. 
we are here talking about the basic ones. So we are excluding things like tan and cotangent and all. We're just like sine, cosine, exponential, hyperbolic, sine, hyperbolic, cosine. So now you're competing between these two. Is there any pre preference between trigonometric and exponential? Uh, not too much. Not really. So you can do either. You can choose anything, but you should be consistent and so to avoid the circular trap, as we'll see. Or rather, we won't see it in this video, but when you actually do an example, we'll see. But the point is, if you actually try to use integration by parts, the thing doesn't actually get simpler. Because the trigonometric will differentiate to something similar, the exponential will integrate to something similar. And you'll never quite get out of that. So the we need some trick, and the trick is the recursive the recursive version of integration by parts. Where what you do is you use integration by parts once or twice, and then you see your original integration reappearing and then you set things equal to each other and solve and you get a linear equation. Okay, now before ending this video, I just want to write down some examples. I won't solve them, but I just want to write down some examples of each type, which we'll then in subsequent videos, we'll actually work out solutions to these. So example questions for the first type. What are some example questions for this? X cos and X. Hmm. Uh, x cosine x, hmm. x sine x, x squared cosine x. By the way, I could also do something like x cosine 2x or change it by a linear factors inside outside. I'm just choosing these because these are simpler to do and I want to just concentrate on the technique rather than careless error. Okay? x e to x. X e to the x, that's the exponential type, right? X hyperbolic cosine x, etc. Okay, so what about this type? Inverse trig or log times polynomial. So, oh yeah, so in this, I want to say another thing which I forgot to say originally is that for this type, you can actually have a situation where you, you're allowed to have the polynomial is allowed to be 1. I mean, that makes sense. Polyno 1 is a polynomial. But it means in particular, if you're just trying to integrate an inverse tree or log and you don't see any other factor in the product, you can still imagine that the other piece of the product is the polynomial 1 and then use and then use integration by parts to, to do this. Okay, so what are some examples? Sine x. The natural log of x. Here the polynomial is just one. one. Okay. X sine x. X times the natural log x. Mm -hmm. Okay. X uh, octane x. X octane x. Or arc sine x. You could have a bunch of these. There are also slightly more complicated ones which are sort of composites. Which which basically work the same technique. So you could have ln of a polynomial. That those work almost exactly like like what I've written. You could have something like x times ln of x cube plus one or x arctan. Okay. okay, and what about trigonometric cross exponential trigonometric cross trigonometric? Well you could have a trigonometric cross Trigonometric would be, so you could have sine square x, you could have, so these are just some of the ones which don't, other methods don't work and you have to use integration of parts. You can e to the x cosine x, this is a trigonometric cross exponential. So we'll actually be working out solutions to all these questions, or one video for each type in subsequent videos.